Okay, in previous class, your friend, uh, six of your friend, um, Amirul, Arina, uh, Alif Fikri, Adi, and then Rauda, Wan Ain, uh, present their work on mat uh, material. So you can see there are three classification of material that they discuss, which is metal, ceramic, and polymer. So we only focus on that. Remember, there are other type of material like natural material that we will not cover. Because what we will cover in this course is only engineering material. Uh, yeah, people use wood to make a building, a house and so on. But we focus on the thing like made from metal, ceramic and polymer. So that's why we will not uh, go in natural polymer, even though there are a lot of things to be discussed under natural polymer. For example, the wood, the cellulose and so on. There are many things. Even your body, the, your DNA inside your body, also the DNA, also the polymer, because it's like a chain of, uh, it's like a chain lah, chain of molecules. So one of the definition of polymer typically is happen is uh, is in chain like lah. If you see something that repeated over over and over time, like arena ke arena, arena you are polymer. One, uh, one, one ain. Uh, talk about the polymer when she draw this thing here. So uh, you remember that she draw this uh, long chain of something. So if you look, see, if you look back on your DNA, DNA also double helix, and this double helix they have uh, the, the chemical lah. So normally we, we denote it as a A T G C, and then you have, and this thing will do all that thing, this double helix thing. So it's keep repeating. When things keep repeating then we can say it's like a chain of uh, whatever lah. So that's why uh, this thing is under the polymer part. Same like your, your skin. Your skin is made from collagen. Collagen also a polymer. So collagen is basically triple helix. Triple helix like that. Made from the protein lah, amino acid. Uh, not creatine, uh, collagen lah. Collagen or creatine and so on lah. Creatine for your hair and collagen for your skin and so on even your nail ah, your nail also made from the polymer so nail uh, you have creatine lah, this for the nail okay what else in your body because i want to discuss something that you will not we will not discuss during this course so i will just give you the overall view that there are more than what uh, more material uh, natural material around us than a synthetic one lah. So this, uh, we just give you the big idea first. What else in your body? Uh, you have the enzyme. Eh? Enzyme. The enzyme in your body. For example, when you eat something, some enzyme break that thing. So that enzyme is made from the protein. Eh? Protein. And this protein, basically the chain, the protein itself is the chain of amino acid. You have something like this. Uh, later on, you will, uh, you will, what do you call? When they say, something ni. You will, you will learn in biochemistry, uh, what's the course? Ah? The subject, I don't remember because the chain subject is a little bit different than B10. So I'm not really sure about uh, chain subject. They are the name of the course. You will learn something like this ah, about the biomolecule and so on. So the protein is basically the chain of amino acid. Amino acid. Ah. They are basically 20 amino acid, 20 AA lah, amino acid in uh, that. Uh, what we call made up the protein lah. For example, for the this thing DNA, the DNA is made up from these four thing A, T, G, C. Adenine, adenine, tyrosine. I don't, I still don't remember lah. This is guanine. This is cy cy. I don't remember what's this thing. So I just go to Google lah. Sometimes you don't need to remember everything eh. DNA. I just end the internet. Let me select the internet first. Uh, what actually what uh, we try to teach you in the university or in school is not for you to remember anything, because nowadays you can just remember. Uh, you can just what we call go to Google, and then just go type. So the 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 skill of remembering or memorizing thing is not unique. Eh? Nowadays you just Google and then you get all the stuff. What we really want you to learn in this university or in whatever you uh, place that you learn something is the skill to utilize what you learn. 
that's far more important than memorizing. For example, you can just Google and then you get all this thing. Eh? Saya tak nampak because it's not double thing, so saya need to write my So, how to make big? So, you can see, I just want to know what is GT the thing. Blah, 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 blah. As you can see here, they have made up from four things only. Cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. So, thymine, thymine, and cytosine. 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 So, from these four alphabet, you get all this, uh, what we call, the combination. Eh? So, uh, A is always paired with the T, C is always paired with the G. It's like the words. Uh, in your alphabet, you have like 24 alphabets, and from that 24 alphabet, you can make various type of words. Same like this. Lah. Uh, so, for the protein, protein is made not from the A, T, G, C, but from the amino acid. If you go for the amino acid, if I go here, amino acid, amino acid, uh, typically there are 20. Lah. Amino acid, where is wiki, always go to wiki only. So, so you can see the thing, where is the amino acid. Uh, this now blah 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 blah. Uh, so that is the type of amino acid they have like 20, 20 right? I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, there are 20. So from this combination, you get uh, this uh, is like, for example, this uh, for amino acid, we don't say the number, for example, let's say histo uh, glycine, GLY, so we put gly, and then we have what? Uh, 16, 16, and then you have aspartame, ASP, and so on. So this thing is basically made up all this, what we call, all this uh, supramolecule uh, structure. So you have this, whatever this thing, lah, then the, this name, lah, whatever. So it can be any combination, and then different combination and even different conformation in that the structure itself will give you a different thing lah. So protein, example of protein like the cell wall of your, uh, ni lah, cell wall of, um, the cell wall itself made from the protein and also the enzyme, whatever and so on. So that is basically uh, the thing that is not covered in our will not be covered in our course here, but you need to know lah, they are more than what uh, we will teach in this, in this uh, course. Lah. So about the material that we will cover this course, there are three, which is metal, uh, ceramic, and polymer. So if you see the civilization itself, is based on the, the name of the material. For example, you have what? You have, uh, first you have Stone Age, Stone Age, Stone Age, and then you have what? Bronze Age, and then you have what? After that, you have. Cakap lah sikit, penat saya cakap. <laughs> After Bronze Age, apa? Huh? Stone, uh, you have Iron Age. Iron Age. So, Stone Age, uh, it happened like 2.5 million before. Eh? I also don't remember, I need to have the thing. Uh, yeah, 2.5 million. Uh, BC, mean that before Christ, before uh, uh, from the Western perspective, before the calendar is before the Jesus, uh, ni lah, uh, born, and then this around around S is around what? Uh, is around 35,000 35, BC, and then this is thousand uh, BC. Okay, so stone is uh, we don't care about that. Uh, now the bronze and iron. Okay, so why the bronze age, bronze age come first before iron? Anyone knows why bronze age come first uh, before iron? Uh, actually, uh, bronze and iron is just uh, the uh, they, they got it. The, the, the element come from the earth itself, and in fact, the they already and uh, the iron is already uh, available here, but they uh, the, the the historian they found that. Uh, many equipment made from bronze here. Uh, bronze itself is what? Bronze itself is basically the combination of uh, copper plus maybe tin lah. Uh, typically tin, around 12% tin. Okay. 
So this is bronze and plus other stuff lah, plus other stuff, other stuff. But this is major composition of bronze. The one that I give to you, one of it is bronze. Which one? Which one? Uh, this is what uh, from the left. Okay, which one? Left or right? So uh, you know lah, you know this is not bronze, right? You know this is not bronze. So left or right? This one, uh, up or down? Up. Okay. Up. This is not bronze. This is copper. Eh? This is copper. This is copper. This is bronze. Okay. So you can see they are uh, more or less the same. Uh, what we call same uh, density in terms of density mean that is correlate with the weight. So you can see the copper is the one that you can find in what we call in your wire lah. Bronze. When you get a medal, bronze lah. Bronze and copper. So the reason why they are more or less the same color is because of they have copper. Okay. So one of the defining characteristic between bronze and copper, uh, the differentiate uh, what differentiate between this is that copper can conduct electricity uh, better than this. In fact, copper is the most conductive material among all. Okay. In order to understand which one. What is the properties of this? You can refer to periodic table. Eh? Uh, so now we go, we look a little bit about periodic table. So today is basically I just want to give overview only. Eh? Uh, maybe later on I will do like one class about periodic table only. But so today is overview, so you get you can get the bird eye view of most of the thing lah. So periodic table. Okay, for the periodic table, I suggest you to go to this uh, what we call. To this website, it's interactive product table, which is called P T A B L E, P T table. Okay, because from this, if you click there, you can see this thing product table. You know this thing. You can even sort. You can play. It's interactive, meaning that if let's say you want to know which of the element here is discovered first, you can just go to discover discovered there. Let me click there. Let me click this thing. Okay, and then you can play this thing. Okay, you can see during 1730, okay, of course, this uh, iron, copper, and zinc is already found before, during this thing, before, before Christ. I mean that 3500 before Christ. But here you can see they put 1730. The reason uh, people to put that, uh, CE, apa? CE is common era, meaning that after Christ lah. So, uh, 1730, meaning that now it's 2022, that's 1730 lah. So, the reason why they just put this year uh, to correlate the discovery of this is basically people confirm that is uh, iron and so on. Before this, they just know how to use it, but they don't really know the detail inside that. Because in order to know, to put something into credit table, you need to know all the characteristics of the stuff lah. Um, but actually, if you look here, they also put here 2000 BCE. They, they already found before lah. Okay. Uh, but just what I want to show you is that the periodic table is filled up gradually. It's not. It's like one day somebody come with this periodic table. This is done gradually from you see from 1900s or 200 years uh, span lah. So you can see over time, yeah. Is filled up like that. Okay, so in this periodic table, just to give you the idea about this periodic table, most of the element in periodic table is metal. Uh, is metal. If I go to series, uh, series, let's say series. If you see, if I put here metal and metal, apa macam ni? Okay, so if I click metal, so you can see the metal made up around eighty percent. Eighty percent, kan? Kira lah sendiri. But roughly all the uh, most of the material element in the periodic table is made from metal, and then you have just a few non-metal. This non-metal is what you will use. Uh, you will learn in organic chemistry, lah. You take organic chemistry right now. You take organic chemistry now. So normally in organic chemistry, you basically use CnOF, ClBr, this thing, lah. Snuff seal. So normally in organic chemistry, that's most, the most common uh, uh, element that you found. Lah. And then in the middle here, you have metalloid. Meaning that this metalloid is have the properties between metal and non-metal. It can conduct, it, 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 not, it cannot conduct well as metal, 
but also it has some conductivity better than non-metal. So this like this in between lah, metalloids. Okay, so so that's metalloid. Uh, so typically in uh, product table, you can see here if I go metal and metal, just I discuss a little bit about product table. So this is what we call alkali metal. Eh? So this part normally in product table, whatever under each column share the same properties. Okay. Uh, in this product table, normally in this product table, whatever under the same column, more or less share the uh, same properties. Except for the hydrogen. Lah. Hydrogen is quite anomaly lah, because hydrogen is gas. So, but uh, uh, by convention, they put hydrogen here. But uh, if you look here, this is metal, right? So this is the quite anomaly. Lah. It's just outlier, but it's convention, so people put hydrogen here. So this is alkali metal. Meaning that it's fun for you to throw this into lake, into water. When you throw this thing into water, it explodes. Okay, uh, yeah, it's explosion lah because it reacts with the water to give the hydrogen gas. Okay, this thing. Because water, inside water, you have H2O. So when you throw this thing, it react with the water, so it release the... Uh, this. So the first part, you have this uh, alkali... Apa? Alkali metal eh? Alkali metal. Uh, they have this characteristic of alkali metal is that when you throw, I put, ni lah. Saya malas nak tulis lah. Saya buat gambar orang. Throw uh, thing in the water. You faham faham lah, right? And then it explode lah. It explode. So that is alkali metal. The first, uh, the second column here, the second column is known as uh, what we call, apa? Saya boleh lupa dah. Apa? Alkali earth metal. Alkali earth uh, metal. So this basically they are they share same properties like the first uh, column, but this is quite thin, a little bit. Uh, kata apa? Uh, apa? Thin lah. Uh, less reactive. Uh, former sangat <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it it react with the water. But this time when you, if I'm online, I just copy and paste. But now I need to draw again. Uh, but it's okay. You throw, and then it react. It did react, but it just very thin lah. So that is alkali as metal. And in the middle here, the bulk here, uh, we go transition metal here first. Eh? The transition metal is the workhorse. Transition metal is the workhorse of the our modern civil uh, modern civilization lah. Because most of the metal that you you find around you, for example, this steel to steel, lagi? aluminium here, this aluminium, the one that I give you, this thing, all coming from this in the middle here. Okay, so where is steel here? Where is steel? Huh? Where is steel? Siapa? Nad Nadra, eh, bukan, you Rauda. Rauda, mana steel? Steel kat mana? Siapa, siapa buat steel lah itu? Eh, siapa buat metal? Siapa? Amirul. Ha, Amirul. You did metal right. Last presentation. Where is? Uh, because you talk about steel right? And not. Rauda lah. Rauda talk about steel. Where is steel? Ayin. Ayin. Ayin mana ayin? Mana ayin? Ayin. 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 Okay, so uh, steel is basically, uh, you cannot find here, it's basically a combination of iron and carbon. Eh? Iron here plus carbon. Okay, you cannot find this from here. Because that is uh, sort of like a alloy of uh, ferrum plus the carbon. But that's what we will do later. Lah. Just to show you that in the middle here, the bulk of the predict table is a workhorse metal that you can find around you. Okay, just uh, uh, where is the thing? Okay, um, among this, even though it's metal, even though this is mostly solid, but there are one thing that is not solid, which is mercury. Yeah. Okay, among all these things, mercury is uh, not solid lah. Actually, you can just play around, but I don't want to play around for now. I just want to tell you. So this transition metal is workhorse, workhorse, eh? workhorse. This is horse, but horse of modern 
Modern apa? Modern Modern apa? Modern engineering lah Engineering As long as you understand uh, Whatever you want to say That's okay For me In your exam As long as I see you understand What you want to say That's okay Because you don't need to Memorize word by word Exactly Unless the definition Is very crucial But in terms of this Let's say People say What is definition of transition metal There are many definitions You can say that It's just like uh, The bulk of the metal That is used in the Industry nowadays That's still correct Okay so don't worry too much about the exact thing unless the, the thing re really require uh, exact definition then only then I mark like that but if the thing, if the uh, question is generic in nature then uh, it depends on I see, whether I see you can understand or not what you do okay, moving on you have this Latinate this, they call it a rare apa? Rare metal lah, rare earth metal. Although the name is rare, it's not really rare so much lah. It's not really rare so much. It's just the name. It's like this transition metal. This is not really a transition at all. It's just a metal. It's just the way how they naming lah. So the rare rare metal, rare, rare earth metal, rare earth metal. I remember somebody asked Amirul during the presentation. What is this Latinic and... Siapa tadi? Siapa nama dia? Saya lupa lah. Bashir. Bashir, ha. Bashir asked about what is this stuff. Ha? Uh, it's just um, basically why this... The reason why it's at the bottom is basically... If let's say, uh, we said before that the periodic table... Or, along the column, they share the same properties. In order for that to be true, this part should be here. That's why you can see this thing. The real product table, you need to be like this. What is the real product table? Mana ya? Susah sikit lah sebab saya kena tengok macam ni. Nanti lah. Saya bawa lah. Susah lah. Mana real product table? Okay, so this. Okay, this. This is the real product table. Meaning that whatever bottom here, actually is in here. 56, 7, 8, 9, 60, 61 until here and then only then you get this uh, metal part and then you go here like that that is the real uh, product table lah. I mean that but this uh, thing is too wide to be put in the books or whatever so that's why uh, people do just like that lah. people just do non-white they just do like this that's why you can see this 57, 58 not 100 plus something like that okay so that's the thing. Um, and then what else? You have the rare earth metal. It's just, it's just what? Huh? It's just, it's not really rare so much. Huh? It's just another. We can say it's a metal also lah. It's a metal also, but it's not really rare. What is my? Okay. After that, you have what? You have um, uh, we go non-metal first, huh? and then you have non-metal on the side here, and non-metal you have here. What is that? What do? Reactive, or whatever lah. But uh, I call it non-metal lah. Non-metal. Okay, non-metal. So non-metal is non-metal lah. And then you have one column here. They call they have special column. Uh, this they call it halog halogen. Eh? Halogen. Halogen is very nasty. Yeah. Uh, this non-metal they have whatever this thing, and also they have halogen column. Eh? Halogen. Halogen is basically CL uh, FCB. Facebook. Eh? F, C, L, B and then BRI. I. So this halogen, they call it halogen column, is very uh, reactive, very nasty. Lah. For example, fluorine. Eh? Fluorine is very, very reactive. The fluorine gas, if you can find fluorine gas, it reacts with anything. For example, if I blow the fluorine gas here, it's combust. It's so reactive. The normal fluorine that you find in your toothpaste, that is fluoride. It's combination of something. Okay. Uh, chlorine also is uh, very reactive. Lah. Chlorine, you use this for disinfectant or like during war, World War, they use the chlorine as a agent for this. Lah. Normally, when this, whatever the most reactive combined with this, Normally, you get a, a compound that is very stable. For example, 
you heard about NaCl. This is garam, eh? a salt. Salt. The normal table salt is a combination of the metal and also the chlorine, uh, the chlorine uh, atom. Typically, the one that is so reactive when it's combined with uh, other stuff, the result is typically very stable compound. Because in order for this reactive thing to combine, it need to expend a lot of energy to make this combination happen. So in order for people to release back, it requires a lot of energy to break it down. So that's why when they combine making a compound, the compound typically stable like the table salt is basically sodium chloride and also in your toothpaste, you have the fluoride uh, thing. They have fluorine also, but it's fluoride and so on. Lah. So that's the halogen part. By itself, it's very nasty. Okay, by itself, it's very nasty. But when you combine making a compound, that's not a uh, much uh, problem. Lah. And then you have this, uh, the last row here, they call it, uh, uh, what you call The noble, noble gas. Lah, because everything there is a gas. Noble gas is uh, so unreactive, I mean, it's not reactive at all. So that people use this to, for example, when people want to, if you try to buy the, let's say you want to buy the chlorine, sometimes they put it under the argon gas. They, 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 they contain it under the argon gas. Even the bulb, this, for example, the bulb, the bulb, okay, inside this they put argon gas, eh? argon gas, because it's not reactive. Okay, they cannot put air. Because air have oxygen. Oxygen combined with the heat, it will combust lah. So that's why in the mantle ni, bulb ni, they put argon gas and so on. So that is the use of the, the what you call, the noble gas lah. Uh, typically, they use it to protect something that is reactive, noble gas. So that is noble gas. Uh, it's just like uh, unreactive, unreactive lah. Unreactive. Okay, and then what else? And then you have this, the diagonal here, they call it metalloid. The metalloid, the metalloid here, they, sh they are, they have metalloid. They share the properties, the properties, properties uh, between metal, metal, and non-metal, non-metal. For example, the silicon, the one that you commonly uh, heard, the silicon here, is the what we call the element for modern semiconducting industry. So the silicon by itself is not really conductive. Okay, you can see the conductivity by going there, by going up there. You can see here, fine conductivity. What is conductivity? You saw lah, saya kepala teleng saya. Saya duduk. Conductivity, mana conductivity? No, electron activity, no. It's bukan tu. How much the electron will attract conductivity? Ah, nih, conductivity. So conductivity, if you look, conductivity normally what we call uh, connected with the thermal, lah, with the thermal. Okay, let's say if I click here, so we go to electric, eh, the ability to conduct something. Uh, like siapa Rauda said, uh, people ask Rauda, uh, did all metal conduct, right? So you click electric there. And then you, you hold this thing, ah, you can see. The darker it is, the more conductive. Lah. So you can see the most conductive among all is copper. Lah. Copper. And also this, our room, is basically gold. If you look gold, you see uh, most of the electronic inside your phone, they are gold, right? People use gold instead of copper because gold have these properties of noble, meaning that it's not corrosive as copper. Okay? Copper is, uh, can be corrosive later, uh, if you expose it uh, for long. Lah. That's why the high-end uh, uh, electronic, they use gold. But by right, copper have higher uh, conductivity. If you look here, the numbers here, I don't know whether you can see or not. This is 59, the number they are. You can see where. You can see, what is numbers? Ah, you can see numbers here. Lah, ni, here. You see, eh? 59. Our room is 45. So by right, the copper is much more conductive. That's why your all your this thing is made of copper. Made of copper. Um, yeah, that's the thing about the conductivity. If you look here, the silicon, eh, 
you have 0 0.00010. So meaning that is very low in terms of conductivity. But one of the unique thing about this is that uh, if you see here, oxygen, they, they didn't put anything because, of course, oxygen is a gas. So how can they want to measure the thing? Because to conduct something, you need to something that is stay in solid. Lah. If you gas, you need measure the conductivity. Uh, anyway, for the silicon here, you see it's 0 0.001 in terms of conductivity. The, the unit is milli um, Siemens, Siemens, S. S, S is basically cement, cement, okay, mega cement uh, per meter. So, um, so if you look silicon here, if I click silicon here, if I click silicon here, silicon is 0 0.001. So the reason why you use silicon in what we call in, in apa? In your phone, uh, semiconductor, silicon wafer you have heard right, silicon wafer and so on. Why people use silicon wafer? The reason why silicon wafer can be is used uh, widely because silicon, even though it's not conductive, but if you dope, meaning that you add something, the name is dope. It's like you sprinkle the silicon. Let's say you sprinkle the silicon with uh, a dope. We call it dope. Doping, eh? Dope. Later we will learn in in detail during the after the mid break lah. But just to give you the overview, in order to make the silicon have some conductivity, they do, they like sprinkle, uh, maybe boron, normally boron lah, boron and phosphorus lah. Typically boron and phosphorus, P, P eh. Boron and phosphorus. When you put this atom inside this, maybe one per million, what will happen is that they, they make this silicon, this silicon, they, they, uh, they behave like a switch. Uh, for example, you can dictate this silicon either to uh, allow the electric uh, electricity to move forward, or you sort of like halt the movement of electricity. I mean that you by doping you make this silicon act as like a switch. Typical switch. You need to go there. You need to switch right. But when this silicon, why people use it so much? Because they, you, you instead of physically touch the switch to on and off, they use electric current. Electric current, they, they put electric current, and then if the electric current, let's say you give like small electric current, so uh, the it will not flow lah. The, the, it's act like off button. If you give like enough electric current, this thing uh, act like the on button. So because uh, from computers is based on logic gate. Uh, on and off, one zero, one zero, one zero thing. So these properties is fundamental for the computer on electronic lah, because after all, uh, computer is based on either you on or you off. Even the data when you talk to your phone, the voice goes to your phone, and then that voice is translated to one zero zero one zero 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 one and so on the megabyte per second and so on, the bytes, the megabit per second in your hard disk or in computer, megabytes, the byte is basically 1000 bytes, I think. The bits here is basically one, this lah, one and zero, lah, this information. So this silicon is useful because you can put this one as a on, zero as a off. So that's why uh, the silicon uh, people use it as a semiconductor. You can use also germanium, arsenic, and so on. If you look here at the metalloid, the eh, mana? The mana tadi? Sini. If you see the metalloid, eh, it's like diagonal, right? Diagonal. As I said before, um, the properties of the element they share the same properties along the column, but here is diagonal. So chemistry is like that, lah. There are no, is. There are no like fast rule to dictate everything. So this like breaking the rule lah. The properties is a little bit different lah for this uh, uh, type of uh, element. So chemistry is like that. It's not. Uh, it's not. You can have like one uh, over over arching rule that govern everything. There will always be exception. So that is chemistry. I 
explain about this because your your subject your 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 apa your degree is chemical right so at least this is the alphabet of your entire course lah it's like the dna dna f4 thing a adenine thymine apa ni cytosine and guanine but for material this the element that make up it's like a lego thing lah that make up everything even the air here even though you, you don't see anything but inside the air there are gas gas is carbon dioxide or whatever and co2 you can find the co2 here so basically this is the the periodic table that uh, the basis of all the uh, the the element the basis of all the material that you can found in the world lah, on the earth and even the in the universe okay okay what else come over 16 Okay, so let's talk about the classification eh? a little bit. So we done about this. Eh? We done about this. I give you the idea about first. I give you the idea about uh, what we will not cover uh, in this class, which is natural polymer, natural uh, material, and then we talk about the history, or how the civilization based on the material okay by the way why bronze come before iron is because uh, bronze is easily can be found lah meaning that in order to find iron in pure like this eh? this iron right this iron right if you walk around let's say this is on the desert right on the desert let's say this is desert you are like the you are in the bronze age now let's say you are in the stone age now how you find the Uh, the metal to make this because if you want to make a house from the wood you know there are three right you can see three but this where is come from huh, where is come from you cannot see like the lump of iron somewhere in the if you correct correct tanah pun you tak jumpa pun yang you nampak pasir je kan ha huh. uh, kayu nampak pokok you potong lah tapi ni where you you get it from the metal Where it come from? Huh? Batu. 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 Outside from the earth. Sorry? Outside from the earth, right? Outside? From the earth. Outside from the earth. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's one thing lah. Because um, Surah Hadid pun said that the the iron come from the meteorite. Because meteorite, when you say meteorite, they say this is your earth. And then the meteorite goes in. Meteor. If you if you look the composition of the material is a pure iron, pure iron ah, it's a pure iron, pure iron, pure iron, uh, pure iron ah, pure iron, pure iron, betul lah, pure pure iron. Uh, okay, let's say now there are no meteorite uh, hit the earth now, so how? Of course, the 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 origin is from the outside, from the outside. But now, currently now, when there are no meteorite around here is let's say i ask uh, siapa nama arina eh ain you ain arina mana arina okey arina belakang okey uh, ain uh, if let's say i say to you uh, bring me 1 kilogram of metal without going to the shop <laughs> where how how you want to uh, not 1 kilogram 1 gram of metal bring me next class how you want to find that without going to shopee Huh. Because now you can see it is take people take for granted oh this metal this metal this metal but where is the origin? Yes, the origin may be from the met uh, the from the metal but that is long time ago. I mean that they they hentam uh, us and then the but where where? It's not like uh, people in industry take one big block of metal and then put in the make a metal and so on. Yes, meteorite is true. It's a uh, made from pure iron. But the most iron that you you use nowadays is not uh, coming directly from the material. It's indirectly lah. But where? Where to take that? Lombong. Lombong apa? Lombong biji timah. <laughs> so basically, uh, that's why the iron come after bronze. Because bronze, you can find bronze in a nugget form. Metal form easily lah in nugget form. 
and tin also eh, copper lah copper not not bronze you can find copper in the dugout form it's a little bit easy lah and tin also you can find is a uh, in nugget form some is uh, not in nugget form some is in combination with others lah but for iron most of the iron they they are they are not you cannot re, it's hard to find in really pure form except you get the meteor lah so normally iron they are in the rock there are some small small iron let me google ha tak senang ada google Aku tak tahu juga sekejap lah. Google lah. Google. Aku nak cari apa? Nah lah, saya pergi kat sana. Cari apa? Tulis apa? What keyword you need to put? Iron origin. Iron origin eh. Iron origin. Okay, iron origin. And then go. Ha, tu nampak tu. Mana ni? Eh, tu bukan. Sekejap ni. Image. Kutip image. So basically, um, iron ore lah, iron ore. And they, they normally they call it iron ore. Okay, so basically, uh, you can see this thing. This is not pure iron, meaning that you need to take out iron from this, from batu-batu, whatever. So there are certain stone that have uh, more iron than others lah. So... Um, in order to extract, so you need to extract the iron from this. So in order to do that, you need high temperature. So in order to do this, it, copper also can uh, come from this, uh, combined with all this ore or stone. But it needs less heat in order to extract. In order to extract iron, it takes more heat, more temp the high, higher temperature. That's why at this time, the, the what you call, the, the, the technique to create the high temperature is is only enough for this to melt the copper and tin. Only later, only then they find the ways to increase the temperature up so that it can extract the iron from the ore lah. Ore is basically... Ore tu apa? Ore apa? Ore, ore apa? Ore. Saya pun tak tahu. Ore, ah, natural rock. Ore is natural rock. Sometimes you talk, 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 you don't understand what you talk. So ore is a natural rock. So that's the how the iron uh, ni lah uh, coming from lah. Okay, let's see about the classification. We have seen the periodic table. We have seen about the history, periodic table, general view. We have seen, um, what else? Huh? Uh, two je lah. So now we want to see the classification of material that you will learn in this course. Huh? Okay. So in this course, you are basically will learn three things, three material, which is metal, ceramic, and polymer. If you forget anything from this course, at least you need to remember that three lah. You have metal, you have polymer, and then you have what? Ceramic. Ceramic. So you have these three things. Okay. So let me make this thing, bullet, and then this thing. Okay. You have three things. Okay, this three things, when you combine one of it, you get, man, saya punya hijau. Okay. So, you get in the middle, and not middle. If you combine anything, you get composite. Composite. Most of the thing that you combine, uh, most of the thing that you use nowadays is composite lah. For example, even yourself is composite. You, your skin is, your skin combined with the tulang, tulang, bones. Then you get hand lah. If you don't have bone, then you have a block of skin. So composite, the reason why people create composite is to get a properties that cannot, you cannot get uh, by the single uh, element or single material alone. Lah. So you combine in order to get a unique properties that uh, is a combination of one or two material. And then after the composite, you have this, what we call the advanced material. What is the example of advanced material? Because after you know, first in the history, they just use the metal, polymer, ceramic. And then when they do know, we know how to combine, they got composite. And after they do got composite, the civilization goes further and they create a lot of high or advanced material. So over here, they are advanced material. What is the example of advanced material? Example of advanced material. 
Because nowadays, you are in the modern days. What is the example of advanced material? Concrete. Concrete. Uh, concrete uh, during the simulation of... Previously, they are already uh, concrete. Of course, they are advanced concrete nowadays. Concrete that can heal itself, they also advanced. Lah. Um, but when I say advanced material here, in general, in general lah. Because concrete, people use it before. Before, even before... Before, I call before the before modernization, they always they already a building made from concrete. Okay, glass. huh? Glass. glass also not because you see the church long long time ago, they use glass also. So type of advanced uh, material it's like semiconductor, semiconductor, conductor, and then maybe biomaterial. Material, ah, sudah. And then apa lagi? Uh, huh? Ceramic. Ceramic is uh, here. Ceramic. By material, apa lagi? Nano material. Nano material. And then once more. Once more is what? Apa lagi satu? Amirul, apa lagi satu? Smart material. Smart material. So, advanced material, this is what we call uh, the, the, the green one. Uh, it's advanced material. Advanced material is basically the material is material used use for high-end hand application. Eh? Application. Composite is basically combination of one or two material. Lah. Composite is basically com combination, combination of one or two or more material. Lah. For metal, lah, for metal, there are there are name for it. They, we call it alloy. Okay, alloy. When you have metal combined with another metal, we call it alloy. Lah. So you have a special name for that. So alloy. When you have metal plus another metal lah, normally, normally lah, normally. But you can also have uh, an, uh, non-metal also. That's also considered as uh, alloy also. Uh, but at least you need to have metal. And then you have polymer, ceramic, and metal. Okay, so that is basically the classification of the material. Uh, these three is what we will learn. And one, two, three, and four, what we learn in this class lah. So smart material, example of bio, uh, example of semiconductor, like I said before, example is what? Aluminium. aluminium. Aluminium, aluminium. Aluminium is not semiconductor. Aluminium is uh, the one that you use to go by the, what you call? In, in your kitchen, you wrap your food with aluminium, that's aluminium. Semiconductor, example is uh, silicon, silicon wafer lah, wafer. Silicon by itself is nothing. Eh? Silicon by itself is just no use. Silicon plus the doping that we uh, say before is then only then it becomes semiconductor. Before that, it's just a silicon. Eh? Because um, pasir, pasir, pasir what? Pasir. Sand. Eh? Sand. Sand is basically sand. It's basically silicon dioxide. That is pasir. Okay. So, they have silicon also. So this silicon, if you extract, is no use so much lah. Only when you dope with something like boron or phosphorus, then you can get a semiconductor. Okay, and then uh, nano uh, later on we will discuss lah in terms of fundamental part later on after the mid break we will discuss how come why by adding something you make thing like a uh, silicon become like a switch. So that's what we will learn later. Nano material is something that is small. What is uh, example of nano material that you heard before? Ini siapa nama? Huh. Farah. Laka Farah. Huh. Siapa? Adeline. Selalu ni suara. Asina. Syamimi. Nisa. Ali Fikri. Belakang Ali Fikri siapa? Aisal. Aisal. Belakang Aisal? Aisal. Hah? Hussein. 
Husaini, Husaini, Bashir, Ayu Irfan. Siapa ni? Siapa? Nirul. Zaim. Ni? Siapa depan? Haris. Ha, Haris, what is the example of nanomaterial? Diam je, saya tanya. What is the example of nanomaterial? Pernah dengar nanomaterial? Ha. Ha. Example of nanomaterial. Ha? I mean, siapa nama? Ha? Tak, tak bukan you. Zain saya kenal. Ni you. Ha. Taufik. Ha, Taufik, example of nanomaterial. Hmm. Nanometri ni apa? Nano ni apa? Kecil. Kecil, kecil mana? Halus. Ha, halus mana? <laughs> kuman pun halus. Tapi kuman tak nano. Halus mana nano? How, how small is nano? Very small. Ha, very small. <laughs> Dijawab dalam exam memang kosong. <laughs> What is definition of nano? Because kuman pun tak nampak. Uh, bacteria you cannot see also. But we don't call bacteria is nano. So, how small is nano? Micro is micro micro. <laughs> micro is not nano lah. Because you have, for example, you have meter, right? And then after meter, you have centimeter. And eh, centi. Kita go bawah, eh. Milli, eh. eh centi lah, centi dulu. CM, and then you have millimeter. And then after millimeter, you get what? Goes down. You have a micrometer. And then you have nanometer. And then you have what? Picometer. And then you have what? Pico ke? Oh, Pico lah. Femtometer. Ah, desi sini. Ni desi meter here. Desi eh. This is meter. So meter, let's say meter is 1. Nanometer is berapa? 10 to power of 99. Okay, that's fine. In term of this, we call it a billions. Billions of meter. Okay, but most of us is not billionaire, billionaire right? You don't feel the how big is the scale. Uh, if I said like uh, centimeter is around 10 to power of negative 2, right? Millimeter, ya ke? Itulah. 10 to power of negative 3, this is 10 to power of negative 6. At least millimeter is to the power of 3 lah. Meaning that uh, you can see it using your pembaris ruler, right? But nano, even though you know the definition 10 to power of negative 9, that's definition billions of meter. But how do you feel the thing? You can just pull it, 10 to power of negative 9, but until you see it, but you cannot see. <laughs> That's a problem. Until you see under the ultra microscope, then you can see how small is this. This is very small. You can see your, um, apa yang small? Apa yang small? Okay, your, your, your rambut, uh, your hair, what is the diameter, roughly? Human hair. Hmm. What is the roughly the diameter of human air? Kira lah. Ni, berapa? Ha, berapa ni? Berapa ni? 0.001. Ha. Kasi ada nama. So roughly is around um, 100 roughly 100 micrometer lah. 100 micrometer. 100 micrometer ni roughly berapa berapa millimeter? 0.01 apa millimeter ke apa millimeter so you can see in your pembaris so the smallest scale is millimeter so rambut is basically you divide that small that's 1 cm you divide this divide 100 uh, then you get rambut lah and then that is just only here you just reach the around here lah you just reach around here okay not yet going to what we call to the micrometer the red blood cell lah red blood cell and not red blood bacteria lah bacteria 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 macam ni kot okay berapa besar dia roughly berapa besar if people because you are chemical engineer uh, previously this uh, this degree is called biotechnology biochemical engineering So somehow what you will learn in this when you are studying here, you will learn a little bit about bacteria and so on. So you need to know if let's say you go to the interview, uh, the interviewee ask, okay, Rauda, what is the typical size of bacteria? Huh. 
Ah, ha? Saya tengok. Hah? Pasal macam ni tengok Google eh. Ha, bagus. Benda boleh cari kat Google, jangan risau. Uh, so it's around 5 to 5 lah It's around uh, But roughly the, the the normal like bacillus or whatever It's around 2 to 5 lah 2 to 5 micrometer So not even nano Because nano From here From micro to nano Is thousand times Difference Okay So you need to have If let's say this bacteria This bacteria This is nano Yeah that's nano I mean thousand times smaller than bacteria lah So that is nano material. The, the, we maybe talk a little bit about nano material later on. But example of nano material is what? Huh? Cell phone? Silver? Silver what? Silver? They have silver. I have silver. Silver. Not silver lah. Tapi anggap lah silver. Ini silver. Silver apa yang nano? Unless you say silver nanoparticle, only then is nanoparticle. Silver as normal, silver. For example, all the elements you can make nano. For example, iron. You can make nano iron. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, but before that, bacteria you cannot see. So, this is how you can appreciate. Uh, water molecule, eh? water molecule. You have H2O. S2O. Berapa besar? Berapa besar ni? Ha, Google, Google. Tak ada. It's around 2.7 Armstrong something. Armstrong something like that. It's around... Google lah. Berapa? 2.7 Armstrong berapa? Armstrong here. Eh? Armstrong is around here. They are... This special unit only used for chemistry and biology lah. The reason why people use Armstrong is because if you look at the diameter of hydrogen atom, Hydrogen atom, okay. If you look, hydrogen. This is hydrogen atom. This thing is around uh, one angstrom. The what we call the, the diameter for this thing. So one angstrom basically zero ten uh, nanometer. Okay, one angstrom ten nanometer. Betul ke? Betul lah. Because this is angstrom is basically ten to the power of negative ten. So ten nanometer lah. So nanometer is basically the size around the size of The atom, the hydrogen, the smallest atom is hydrogen. This hydrogen atom. Eh? So, that is nanometer. So, example of nanomaterial, uh, you might heard before, CNT. Uh, carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotube. Like Fatin. Fatin ke nama? Saya lupa lah macam tu. You siapa? Ha, Fatin ke Fatimah? Farah. Farah. Uh, like Farah said, silver. Eh? That silver, you can put silver nanoparticle. Nanoparticle, yes. And then maybe you heard before graphene, graphene that also example of nanomaterial. So that's nanomaterial. And then smart material, they are things that can change upon stimulus. For example, lah, I don't bring today, but later maybe I will bring lah. I have paper clip, paper clip here. Okay, smart material is that. For example, if I try to do like this, this metal right, it stay like this right. Smart material, let's say I have the torture, torch or whatever, I try to hit this thing. It suddenly become, again, it become paper clip again, like normal. So it's a uh, response to the stimulus. And uh, maybe next class I will show, no, later lah, I will show that thing. Uh, that paper clip, eh? that special paper clip. So that is smart material, they, 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 they respond to the stimulus. Res They have response to stimulus. Okay. Biomaterial. Example of biomaterial. For example, your valve, your knee thing. In order to make, like for example, knee replacement, you need to find a material that when you put inside your body, because when you put something inside your body, the first thing that happen is that blood start to go. When you put something, let's say this is carunisac. Uh, And then can you uh, put some uh, plastic in the body? Once you put something material inside your body, mana? Let's say this thing, ni lah ni, kat ni, dekat uh, ni replacement lah. Eh. Once you put something in your body, what the first thing that happen is that the blood will go and surround this thing. And inside the blood, there are protein called plasma. And this protein have uh, what we call capability to bind, to uh, to adhere to the material. If you choose wrong material, 
the blood plasma will clot. We call it clot lah, clot. Will clot here, and that you get thrombosis. Thrombosis meaning that the blood clot lah, the blood will be clot here. So you need to find the material that be able to not to allow this clotting lah. We want clot if let's say you cut your hand. Let's say you cut, let's say Kaironi Sak cut uh, her hand while while chopping the onion. Okay, when your hand is what we call cut, darah uh, keluar and then over time they are clogged. The, the 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 blood stop to to flow because the clotting factor because they are inside inside the drug, blood itself they have this clotting factor this enzyme lah. So they, they that's what we want. It help us, but this what we don't want. It's same thing, same mechanism, but this we don't want because it's clot inside. So in order to so this biomaterial in order to create that material is also a sign by itself. It's not just it's not easy. You need to um, to to do something with the material itself. We will learn before, uh, later lah about this biomaterial. But this example is example apa? Uh, synthetic synthetic. Jantung apa? Heart. And so on lah. You know lah. Uh, by material and implant and whatever. So that is basically the 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 generic idea. The generic um, classification of material. So each material here. If let's say you want to test this material. Eh, what will you look for? Let's say you want to test this thing. You create a new material. From polymer let's say. And then. Uh, you want to sell that material. How do you test that material? What test you do? So the test you do is to find the properties of material. Lah. So typically there are six properties of material. If let's say I put here. If I can copy this, copy, put here. It's easy. Doing online is like that. But now, okay. Eh? So there are six Properties that normally associated with a uh, material. The first one, itu masa lo, nak beda. The first is mechanical properties. Mechanical properties. I will continue later. Lah. Properties, properties. And then the second one is, what? Thermal. Thermal properties. Thermal properties. Properties. And then, apa lagi ya? Optical. Optical properties, properties, and then empat electric properties, the ability whether the battery can conduct electric or not. Electric, prop, electrical properties, properties, and then lima enam. And then apa lagi? Mechanical, thermal, optical, electrical. Apa lagi? Tak ingat dah. Kau dia? Saya ingat dah kau dia. Ah, magnetic. Some material have this magnetic properties, eh? Properties. And lastly, deteriorative properties. Meaning that uh, properties is meaning that uh, degradation properties, eh? Normally, this is related to chemical, lah. For example, corrosion. Okay, some material can corrode uh, faster than others. So normally when people say characterize the material, this is typically the properties, the six properties that they look for. Okay, mechanical properties, thermal, optical, electrical, magnetic, and distributive properties. So uh, for the so next week maybe we uh, next week lah. It's coming Thursday. Maybe we discuss. Uh, we will continue further from this lah. It's already ten and uh, ten nine forty five. So I think we end uh, now. Okay, so that's it for today.